He used to be out on the corner, he was dealing with That's pretty good. <laughs> Damn, we just got like a hundred intros from this new innovative thing that we got. Guys, welcome back to Jeff FM. F F F F M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M That says cranes on it. I had a lovely Sunday yesterday. I went with my lady. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that yet. <laughs> the fucking pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. This is terrible. If we, if we did the whole episode like this by accident, I would, I would be pissed. The cult is growing. UFC superstars are taking my methods and using them to become the baddest men on the planet. Trained assassins use my methods. Trust me, look what I've done to these boys. Kyle, show an old picture of yourself. How far you've come. Something we're starting out. Uh, I will give you guys tips on ways to better your mental health, physical health, some easy things, even if you don't have the resources that we have out here in Hollywood with, you know, juice bars and kale all over the place. You can do some easy tips at home. Like if you want to start out tomorrow, maybe start out with a cold shower. Might sound uncomfortable, but that's something that will make you feel better than your friends. I already went in the shower. It was freezing cold. I screamed like a girl and it got my blood flowing, which accelerates your heart rate. In turn, will burn fat, tighten your skin. You worried about those that loosened skin around your tummy area. If you lose some weight, a cold shower can fix that. Simple as that. I'm just giving you guys easy tips and easy tools that you have at home. That's what this podcast is now. Elon Musk wakes up at 4.30 in the morning and shocks his body with 36 degree water. I do as well. And that's why we have so much in common. Look at us. We're running multiple businesses. I have Jeff FM, Jeff's Barbershop, Jeff's Barbershop Productions that makes documentaries sometimes. Jeff Wittick Inc. That is a umbrella over all of our production companies that sometimes makes even bigger productions that will be coming soon next year, early next year. I'm in and out of the shower. Boom. What's the temp? Five minutes max. What's the temp you're doing? 80 degrees. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Damn. Phase 75 probably. You're probably coming out of there ready for a nap. Oh, I'm ready for work when I get out of the shower. Josh. When I get out of that cold shower, I bolt out the door. I run six miles. I get a kale smoothie. I come back, do some guided meditation, maybe some hot yoga, read yeah, a book, dude, I've been ultra paying attention take to Nerf to the park for a walk, let them play, engage with other dogs. This is my life now. And I'm not going back. <laughs> See this hydro flask? We're profiting off environmentally friendly things now. And I'm spending all the profits on new designer sunglasses for myself. Because that's another thing that you can do to make yourself feel better and more confident. Treat yourself. Go buy yourself a new pair of shoes. Buy yourself designer sunglasses oh, that no. are too expensive. Get yourself a haircut. Go into a nice salon oh, and I pay somebody for a haircut. I want one. <sighs> We only have one right now. I treated myself yesterday. What'd you do? I went, I went to the mall to get a suit and tie, or the, the button-up shirt and just pants for the wedding. I ended up spending $400 on everything else but that. What else did you buy? I don't know, Moroccan oil. <laughs> I have fucking hair oil samples all over here. We have Ex that's exfoliating body wash bars. I make all this. We have. We have. I saw that <laughs> he posted on TikTok. Oh. I was like, bro, we're literally you making get all, all this stuff thing. for free. <laughs> I'm literally giving it to you guys to, so it works on everybody's skin. We need to test these products on your skin. You have the most you sensitive never, skin. You never Steven, hair oil? Steven, we have boxes of products out there for you to try. We need to go through trial and error with all these products for years. We need to burn the shit out of your skin to realize that that product's no good. And we make our little revisions and then we go in there and we come out with a perfect product. That's your Jeff's Barbershop brand. We take all the fucking pain so you don't have to experience it. Well, I didn't think about that. I was just like, I really could use some hair oil. Feel free to take all of the samples of shampoo, conditioner, body wash, exfoliating. It is exfoliating, Watch charcoal it. exfoliating. And the deodorant, you take all that. Return all your shit. <laughs> all right. Well, we got George Janko coming on in a little bit. He gave Steven a talk last week. It was nice of him to reach out. 
I appreciate that. Because look, when you get to a certain stage in life, you realize what's the point of living anymore? What am I doing? You know, I got to pass on this knowledge. You know, I'm not really, I don't care about money. I don't care about having sex with random women anymore. I'm not into that. I know you'll probably get into that phase, but first, you need to, I'm not. You're not going through that? No. No. I don't look up. I wouldn't say that. First things first, Stephen, you need to work on loving yourself. That's what I had to talk with him about, trying to love yourself more. You had Embrace to talk yourself. with George? George? Own it. Own yourself. Oh, yeah? Like confidence, yeah. Kyle, what is that that you just drank out of? Uh, <laughs> so where we can't drink, but we don't have flasks. So how no, are we supposed to- No, my flask to... is out there, but I, I was going to use a water bottle first before I finished my wow. flask. Wow. It was provided by Jeff Whittick, so- <sighs> Man, it is nice drinking out of metal. It's just a taste of money. You know, cha-ching, right in your mouth. It's like a handful of quarters right in your fucking <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. I love it. And I feel good because I'm saving the environment. Where What's going you, on, Oscar? Where are you getting your water from? Yeah, where'd you? Yeah, you don't have a the dispensary. You guys think you're fucking smart, huh? You guys will never outsmart me ever again. This is LaCroix in here. You I dumped it out of cans. Him. No, it's smart. No, yeah, it's it's it. LaCroix. Yeah, LaCroix. you can hear the bubbles. <laughs> hear the bubbles. Listen to the bubbles. Hear that? Don't fucking try me on my own show. You're all replaceable, except for Oscar. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. You're not replaceable. You know what? Look, Steven, I, I know you guys probably have mixed feelings about me having this woman in my life and wondering if it's a fling no, or no, if it's going to go anywhere or whatever, no. if she's, if she's, you know, Jeff, stay, if she's taken over my life. I haven't thought of, I've thought about it. No? No. You know, she took me out to the flea market yesterday and then we went and did some shopping. She said I needed to work on my skincare routine. And this is what a woman will do for you. You know, like you probably don't know how to really live yet. Do you know how to wash dishes? Use like a, <laughs> a, a washer and dryer? Yeah. Do you know how to wipe your ass? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's Seriously? Incredible. I've had a girl teach me new things. You had a girl. Okay. So girls help us grow. They help us mature. Yes. But she took me to Sephora and she made me buy this uh, face moisturizer. Yeah. It was three hundred dollars for a little bottle of face moisturizer. Oh my god! What if what if what if I had a girl like take me to Sephora and she was like, "You should really buy this. This is like this is like the best stuff for your face." And I'm like, "Oh no, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, you can't, I can't afford it." Like, <laughs> you spend your entire bank account on face moisturizer. <laughs> That's, That's so a TikTok. Awkward. That's a TikTok right there. Or it could be a real life situation. Probably will happen. Probably soon. will happen. Yeah, it happened to me. But I had the funds to buy it. I barely. It could be fucking running low now. Um, but yeah, I think she's good for me. I think you guys will realize that. Or who knows? She seems very sweet. I mm -hmm. her for five seconds. Before we get the guest in here, I'd like to talk a little bit about myself and what's been going on with me. I had a late night last night. I went to bed around 3 a.m. And I was abruptly woken up by a dog barking in the house. It was Nerf. And he doesn't usually bark like that anymore because he's blind and deaf. But something was going on down here. And I, you know, I looked over. I looked down the stairs. He was okay. I didn't think anything of it. I went back to sleep. Then I come down here this morning and there's a fucking drone crashed in the living room. In the patio. One of you motherfuckers out there tried to infiltrate my home with this technology. So a and drone we fucking literally we got came it. into your apartment. Yeah, with a note, a ransom note attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> what if those fucking one of those propellers clipped Nerf and <laughs> cut his skin? Read the read the note. I'm not gonna even give this person the fucking platform that they want by doing this no, shit. But, but, I will not. I will not read every note that is flown into my house read by the a last drone. Sentence. P.S. If I circumcise Nerf with my drone, my sincerest apologies. XOXOXO. This is not funny. This is not happening. I'm not reading your name. I'm not putting your Instagram shout out on here. Nothing. This crap needs to end now. I just want to be a spiritual guru, all right? I'm not looking to have war with people. But if that's what you want, we got all the fucking drones, all the technology, and we got nothing to lose over here. We got plenty of disposable people that will do a life sentence for this podcast. What's going on, guys? George Janko, everyone. George Janko. Put those headphones on, George. I don't use headphones. No, you have to here. Why? This is not impulsive. I, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with a guy. It's a different show. It is, the most, <laughs> it is the most innovative podcast in the game. Oh, because you use sound effects, so that means a lot. You, and I, I would be out of it if react. I... Show them some innovative technology. You made me look like my dad, bro. What's going on? Uh, do me, do you me, do me. You just wait a couple of years. You'll do probably... Me. 
Look no, at that. Dude. Shit. This show is sick. Look at it. You actually look better this way. Steven, look a lot that's what I'm saying. That's Steven, right. Maybe you should have cut your hair. That's, that's what I'm sad. saying. Steven, oh! <laughs> I miss that, Steven. so much confidence. <laughs> Bro, you kind of look like a human baby bottle pop. Like, I just want to lick your head and then stick you in oh, sugar and just shake you up. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. Like, okay, I will never do that. Our audiences are now spilling over because we're kind of coll uh, collabing our squads. Yeah. Um, Which I love. We know way. each other. Yeah, no, seven no one, years. Eight no one's years. gonna fuck you up and then leave you stranded in our squad. <laughs> <laughs> Blame me for it. <laughs> hey, Terrible fault. You smash your head into that crane. That's yeah. fucking crazy, bro. No, I appreciate you talking to this guy because I talk to him. I give him all the same advice that you did, but he's always like distracted or he's too cool to hear it. I guess it worked coming out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he came in and regurgitated the same shit that you told him, and I tell him that all the time, and I'm fucking sick of it because it, it just goes in one year out the other. Have you ever tried um, punching him? Yes. Oh, okay. So I don't know the fuck wrong with him, bro. To be honest, weekly basis, but <laughs> whatever you did, you got through to him. Well, I'm glad, dude. Sometimes it just, uh, you know, it's how you say it, and I feel like you, you know, you might be a little intimidating to talk to, bro. Yeah, but I'm, I'm changing now. <laughs> I'm learning new ways. I'm on a new path. I'm working on uh, transitioning from an influencer into a spiritual guru nice. i guess like um a mentor to these boys and all of my followers here you know i have people that are part of this group this organization that are willing to do a lot of bad things for us and to that motherfucker that flew that drone in here i'm just letting you know that oscar is tracking your ip address and we will be we will be coming for you so, so that dead ass just flew in here last night 4 a.m <laughs> did it really yeah, flew right Dude, in. Where? And I leave the door open outside, which I won't anymore. If other you guys got this idea and you're like, oh, his fucking door's open every night. I leave the door open for the luxury of Nerf to go in and out. You know, he's 15 oh, years old. Oh, they ruined your dog's luxury, bro. That's fucked up. I'm gonna have the to, house. Is there an SD card in there to see like, uh, no. there's no SD card in there? Mm. It wasn't Jonah? It's self-destructed. It wasn't I'm... Jonah? No, there was a ransom note attached to it. What did it a say? A what? A ransom? I refuse to read it on the show. I won't give them a platform. I don't negotiate with terrorists. I don't read their notes on my on my platform here that I work to build and spread positivity. The world is an angry place. I love in the sound of now. I understand why I now need that. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Here, put this back. My fingerprints are on it now that uh, <laughs> Jeff's involved. I feel like I'm going to be called by the police. Huh? That's all right. You'll be fine, George. You have any, you ever been in trouble with the law? Uh, when I was younger, I got into some trouble. I've been arrested a few times, but never like booked down to the like. I, oh yeah. I, I wasn't like a thug. I grew up kind of like a little different than most. I grew up in a uh, in a house. We you know my mom and dad were uh, comfortable and they took care of me, but they also made me work for what I have. Uh, and my dad has a, a, a bunch of properties and liquor stores and stuff. And, and they're usually, uh, now they're they're a lot better. But before they were in the ghetto, I was raised kind of split. So I had this lifestyle where I was, I had the neighborhood rich kids that were like driving fucking Lambos to school and shit. Like it was. The, I, Where'd it, you grow up? Uh, I, I grew up in Arizona. Scottsdale, Arizona. Arizona, yeah. And then uh, I would work with my dad at his store. And then my friends there were like broke, broke, like living on welfare. It was just this balance that I had. And I got to see the both worlds. And I understood that a lot of things that people on this side had, the people on this side didn't have, and this side didn't have on this side. So it's like uh, the, the people that were broke and hungry, they still had family and uh, like good friends. But the people that were rich were like spread out. Their families were broken and like, Mind you, not every single one of them, but I got to grow up and see a lot of cool things. But when I was in the rougher side, uh, I, we like boxed, we like broke windows and shit. Like it was, it was, there was a lot of stupid things. I think the first time I ever got arrested was we were ding dong ditching and the house next door had a breaking and entering. So oh, bro, they damn. slammed me on the ground and I was like, damn bro, just for ding dong ditching because I rang the doorbell and ran, right? And like two blocks away as a joke, I said, the, the cops are here. Because the cops busted around, so all of me and my friends started running away from the cops. Yeah. But as a joke, because, like, we just ding-dong ditched. Obviously, that cop wasn't here for us, because it was just, like... Just fucking terrorizing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. See, that's the vibe over here. Oh, it's porno just music. Chill. I love it. We do a little inspirational talks. Okay. And then we mix it in with crime and our dating lives. Nice. All right, cool. And Fire off. Steven's got a girl. I got a girl. I have, you have a woman a girl, in my yeah. life. Well. So no, 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 he doesn't have. I a have a woman in my life who's you, got me drinking out of hydro flask. She's got me doing. You got a good woman. Oh, nice. My girl got me on the hydro flask. 
Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I saw it and I was like, what is this expensive bottle that that bottle could do for literally 10% of the price? <laughs> I mean, I'm just kind of doing it just to make her happy right now. How when long you have you met been me, I was in a relationship. Yes. We, right? Are we allowed to talk about her? Yeah, or? of yeah. course. Yeah, it's uh, public. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Mexican actress. And then now I'm with another Mexican actress. You or love so, you love yourself some Mexican actresses. So your boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, like it's like official. Well. Or is it still like the talking phase, but you're like, it's getting there. Yesterday we were booking flights to go to the wedding. I asked her to come to the wedding and I was telling Ivan to book the flights. And I said, you might come. And he goes, who's that? Your girlfriend? And he was on speakerphone and we were in the car together and we haven't really discussed that yet. She kind of just says like, I'm just going with the flow. I'm happy. You know, I'm, I'm having a good time spending time with you. And you know, it is what it is. Whatever happens, happens. This you're is taking her to a wedding though? Yeah. It's That's a legit fucking request though. You know what I mean? Like I need a date. I'm not going to just, you know, everybody's bringing dates I, and girlfriends. I, so when I was single, I never understood how guys would bring girls they're dating to events. Because to me, it's like, you're already dating her. And yeah. if you're opened, I would go to the wedding, bro. I mean, trust me, a wedding, bro, a wedding, girls there are dying for a man. Are you fucking kidding? You really like this girl. Were you, you talking in the beginning? He wasn't talking, right? Or did my shit cut? Because he did this. <laughs> With no fucking words at all. That tripped me out, bro. I thought you were having a stroke for a second. No, no, yeah. No, just... Okay, go ahead. So what no, were we saying? Never, sorry. No, no, no. Respect no, no, no. Please. If you like really enjoy this, like your company with this girl and you really like yeah. her and you think like, you know, like maybe she's the one. Yeah. Don't you want to bring her to a wedding where it's like very intimate and it's a uh, just very romantic environment? They throw the flowers back and you catch it and it's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't and mind it. If you, if you really fuck with her that way, then yeah, absolutely. Also, don't ever be the fucking guy to propose at a wedding. I fucking hate that douchebag. People do that? I fucking hate that douchebag. <laughs> the guy who throws a boot, the girl that throws the bouquet and then like she catches it and then like, she's like, wait, why didn't nobody else go for it? And then she turns around. The guy's like, you know what? All of this makes me want to have. And it's no like, way. that's only in the movies. That happens all the fucking time, dude. All and you know what? It's like, how do you fucking think that's okay, bro? You're stealing the moment from the two yeah. people that are like. So if you're at home right now and you're married to somebody who uh, asked you to marry you at a wedding, he's a dork. <laughs> you married a dork, bro. Like you married a dork. Yeah, that sounds like something that I would only see in the movies. But you know, if you've experienced that, then damn, you no, want to go on YouTube, bro. It's there all the time. I, yeah. love, I love watching two things on YouTube. Uh, wedding proposals and Justin Bieber talking to pa paparazzi. Those are my two favorite things. <laughs> I waste YouTube. Have you ever seen Justin Bieber talk to paparazzi? Very polite and just like. No, 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 no. no, no. Before, <laughs> before, bro. When he was like super condescending and would just like, he would ask them questions that they like, yeah. you know what I mean? I am, I'm trying to get to that level of a person to where you're just like, you have to talk to these people in a certain way. These people that are coming over to take pictures with you and he's just like so nice. And he just shuts them down in such a nice way. Like yeah. So politely. Well, he's Justin Bieber. And like, bro. why are you speaking to me? <laughs> Guys, please. We're all human. Like, I just want to go shopping. Just wanna, you know. No, he doesn't even do that. He's just like, why are you speaking? <laughs> I got a funny story with Justin that you'll like because you love Jesus. He, um, <laughs> we were in a club in Miami, a very popular nightclub, Live. Yeah. And he had just started dating Haley. Yeah. And they were hitting it off. He was so happy. He was, you know, he had the butterflies. I could sense it in him. He, he was in, in love. He was, yeah. he was falling in love. And he's telling me that he's thinking about proposing. And I was, I had just got out of a relationship. I just, you know, I, I was going through a breakup. And he's telling me that you're such a good guy. You're such like a genuine guy. Every time I see you, like I just get good energy from you. And I'm like, wow, that means a lot coming from you. You're a good guy too. And he goes, no. I'm not. It's all because of Jesus. Jesus is the reason I am the way I am. I didn't really know what to say to that. I'm going to be honest. The only thing I got out of that is Justin Bieber's lonely as fuck, bro. <laughs> lonely. And now I get the fucking song, bro. Who the fuck opens up to Jeff Winnick at a fucking club? <laughs> you were the last person I'm opening up to at a fucking club, bro. Yeah, yeah. dude. I think I'm in love, Jeff. This convict that I've never mm. even shared a conversation no, with. No, bro. I've talked to him a lot. I've talked to him in weird places. We bumped into each other in a lot weird of places, weird places. Because you're probably doing weird things, Jeff. I was at a uh, spa. You're fucking hard, I was bro. at... Spot. Well, I don't want to put the name out because I don't want people chasing down Justin. Is that the place Justin. where you jerk off afterward? They jerk you off? No, bro. No, I'm not jerking off in no spa. Nah, they're jerking no. you off. No, I mean, you get like no, that's weird if it, you jerk off no. at the spot. 
It's not a hand <laughs> job spot. It's a co-ed spa. You wear bathing suits in there. I don't know what story you're going to tell, but I don't think you're going to want it in here anyway. Yeah. You're going to start <laughs> telling it, and then you're like, no, 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 actually, forget it. I didn't get jerked oh, off at the end. Oh, you that guy that tells a story and then goes, Jeff, actually, I uh, really would want that <laughs> no, story. No, he'll that story, and I'll be like, hey, about it. don't say that one. <laughs> so one time I went to this co-ed spa. It's a cool spa here in LA, and I walk into the steam room, and I hear somebody singing at the top of their lungs, Christian music. <laughs> <laughs> and just acapella, you know, obviously you're in a steam room. So then the steam clears and it's Justin. Dude, and he's dude. like, hey, what's up, man? There's no way. I swear. You're fucking with me, bro. I swear, bro. I don't lie. No I don't lie. I never cap. I don't cap. I have up, stories but... about Justin Bieber, too. I can, I can, I can I've never oh, hang out at 600 Vine. No, back bro. In the day. Before, I had, I've never talked about this story. And I'm down to tell it. If you're promising me your stories aren't cap. Uh, when I was a kid, I was watching uh, Never Say Never, the, the documentary thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I remember when the when this doc or movie somewhat ended, I just started fucking crying my eyes out. From the Justin Bieber? Yeah, just documentary? sobbing my eyes out. And uh, my dad turned to me. He's like, why are you crying, bro? Like, I already fucking took you to the shit. He didn't want to watch Justin Bieber's documentary. Yeah. By the way, this is, I'm young. I'm in Arizona. And uh, I was creating at the time videos before YouTube was like even really a thing before people were uploading. I was making like music videos. And, and this it was, like, was when 20 dude, I was like, I started writing when I was like 11. I was performing wow. in the second grade. I was getting pulled out of class to go perform. And I got held back in the third grade from missing dates. Wait, you wrote music? Yeah, I started like out as a musician. Oh, shit. So George is a singer, dancer, comedian, actor, writer, producer. Yeah. I just podcaster. Got, I, I just entertain, bro. That's, I, I like to tell people it's short and sweet and it's, so it's less Hollywood. I go, I'm a storyteller. And I just pick a chamber of which I want to tell. Is the story. that what you say? I just—I'm hmm. a storyteller. I just tell a story. Uh, I say something different every time. Oh yeah, but of course. You're a convict. You have to tell them what you've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forget sometimes. <laughs> I cry my eyes out in the movie theater, and uh, my dad asked me why, and I said because I know in my heart of heart I'm meant to be an entertainer. And I go, and I have no idea how I'm going to get there. I have no idea how I'm going to get there. Your dad goes. I have, yeah, I my have dad's a gay like son. me neither, man. <laughs> <laughs> I came to America. Your job is done. <laughs> Wait, uh, this is in the public movie theater. I mean, that conversation was more at home. But yes, I was crying in the movie theater. Watching the Justin Bieber documentary? Yes, straight up. I'm not even kidding. And I can call my daddy. He remembers the day like it was yesterday. Like, and when I mean sobbing, bro, like I was fucking sobbing. Because when I watched his life, and it was the first time I ever watched like a behind the scenes where they had like dresses, makeup artists, all this shit. I was like, I got none of this. I got nobody giving a fuck about me. I have no fan base. I have no agent. I have no manager. I have nothing. And so I'm just this kid with a dream with literally fucking nothing to show for it. So I started crying and I was like, oh my God, I'm another person out there that just has a dream that works at it. By the way, I didn't have like after school, I'd come home from the moment I, I was at home from school to literally I was done at night. I would not stop practicing, dancing, singing, acting. If I needed, because I had a recording studio, if I wanted a microphone, like I know a lot about microphones. Like this microphone was recorded Thriller. Michael Jackson's Thriller was recorded off this microphone. Really? These yeah. are We just yeah. got these because Joe Rogan uses them. Yeah, and it's a fantastic microphone. I went to school for audio engineering because I thought I music was my thing until Logan was like, hey, man, it's not. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not your thing. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, so... Um, no, it doesn't, I don't sound like Michael Jackson. Uh, that terrified me. I don't know what that was, but that scared the living shit out of me. Okay, I won't do it again. Go on. Sorry, I won't interrupt your story. This is like three years, four years later, I'm like 15 or 16, and I wrote a few songs. They were very like disco style songs. Like they were very like funky. And then uh, Bruno Mars started doing it, and I was like, what the fuck? I was on the right path. And then uh, Kiss FM came out with a radio station. They're like, hey, do you want to be the next Justin Bieber? And I was like, <laughs> yes. And uh, by the way, I got bamboozled by this several times. Have you ever like heard the commercials? Like you could be the next Hannah Montana. Just pay this acting class and then they could scout you. Bro, I had some weird shit. I paid like 200 bucks for this class once and then they put me in a parking lot and then they're like, okay, that's it. And I go, what, what the fuck was that? And they're like, well, an agent drove by, wanted to see you. And if they liked you, they would call you in. And if they didn't, they would read. There's cameras all over the place. So be careful. It's okay. Uh, do your thing, Reed. So basically, I got scammed. <laughs> These two look like brothers, man. That's what I'm saying, bro. Can we get a kid? Could you, like, <laughs> this is Just so go, funny. Go, come over here. Just so you get on my camera here. Same jeans. Good jeans. <laughs> Good jeans. Look at you two. Wow. We both have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the song. I won't copyright you. You can play it. Just play a little bit. This is actually the song. This is your song. Yeah, yeah. Your Produced, back. sung, yeah, everything. Written, like, written, so everything. And you made this at what age? I wrote this song when I was like 14, but this is a redone version like five years later. 
Wow, so you've been at it since oh, since the day I was born. See, I knew I always wanted to be an entertainer, but it took me so many stages of like getting arrested and fucking trying to make money to fund projects and stuff like that. Because I tried auditioning, like maybe 25 was my first audition. I got a no, tried again, got a no. And I was like, all right, fuck this. I'm done. I'm over this. I'm just going to figure out a different route. And that's all around the same time where we all started mining together in that fucking social media just complex yeah, the original hub, hype house yeah the hub yeah the, the first ever content house. house it was like dorms it was like hype house dorms people just walk in your room all the time and just start filming it's just like yeah go go, go i had to go move in there because i felt so weird that i was like just always there and didn't have a house so i, like, I literally moved in because we were there all the time was everyone on the same floor it was just like no nah, different just, levels everyone. yeah there was like all over the place yeah, um so many different stages we've gone through in this game you Dude, know? so many, and that, that's why I wanted to. I want. I, I only wanted to tell the story because I really feel like there's somebody out there that's like trying, and they're like, "Man, I really haven't figured this shit out." And the, the answer is, you'll never figure it out. But short, like the long story short, the Kiss FM thing, and there was a, a singing competition, and you get to perform at Justin Bieber's concert, and you get a one thousand dollar check. Five thousand people entered, and I won. I got no to perform way. at the at the concert. You open for JB. What? So they told me I'd open up for Justin Bieber, but it was like outside the stadium. They had a stage with the radio station. So if you, like, the, there was thousands of people there watching this. So it wasn't like uh, outside and nobody was watching. It was yeah. before the doors opened. So I get the check. I'm having the best day of my fucking life, bro. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. I just won. Can't believe it. Everybody at school actually showed up to, to like, boo me because they, they hated me. Um, and then I won. And then that's the first day when I realized when people switch. Because I won. And then people were like, yeah. And they were taking pictures. And I was like, oh, fuck. This is how it is. And that actually changed my mindset because I was like, oh, like they're going to hate you or love you regardless. So fuck it. Just do what you want to do. Grab my check, heading to the car, and a kid pulls up in a Segway. Now, Jeff, the show's about to start in like five minutes. Ooh. And this Justin Bieber lookalike is running around. And I'm like, this can't be Justin. A lookalike. It's like five it's minutes before the show starts. Everybody's sitting in their seats. The fuck is this kid doing with a Segway in, in, the, in the parking lot by my car with no security guards? So I look at him, I go, ah, I go, fuck you, you're not really Justin. And I walk away, I open the car, I'm putting this big fucking fat check in, and my mom's sitting there chatting with him. And I go, mom, get in the car, bro, it's not him. And she's like, okay, you have a great show, okay, honey? And he's like, all right, bye. And then he takes off. And then the next day I see on the news that he got away from his security <laughs> and he took a Segway into the fucking parking lot. So my mom was chopping it up with Justin Bieber while I was like, fuck you, you're not Justin Bieber. Cause like, I didn't think it was actually him. Yeah, he's just out being a kid. Yeah, and so my mom just was chopping it up. around on a Segway. Yeah, so then years later, I'm out of uh, uh, the conservatory recording arts. I go to, uh, to LA here. This is why I came to LA is to, to be an engineer. And I was interning for this recording studio and Justin Bieber walks in. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to go up to him and I'm going to tell him about that I performed at his concert. Like maybe he remembers me, you know? And I walk up to him and uh, the recording studio guy, uh, I'm not going to say his name out of respect for him, David. And he grabs me. He's like, what are you doing? And I was like, uh, what do you mean what I'm doing? And he goes, what are you going to go talk to Justin Bieber? And I go, I mean, yeah, he's like right there. And I like, I kind of have history with him. He goes, oh, you kind of have history with him. He goes, how about this? Shut the fuck up and go clean the toilet. And I was like, oh. And I was like, he, he goes, you don't talk to Justin Bieber, bro. He goes, you're the intern. He goes, you talk to Justin Bieber. If Justin Bieber walks out and goes, hey, I need somebody this to wipe guy. my ass. Yeah. yeah. You oh. with me. Yeah. He goes, wipe my ass. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a pretty comfortable house and I've never fucking had somebody talk down to me like that. And that was fucking weird. So I called my dad and I go, yo, fuck this guy. And my dad, he's my like fucking best friend too. He's like, yeah, fuck that guy. Does he not know you performed outside of Justin Bieber's concert? And I was like, yeah, that's what I fucking said. He's like, fuck that recording studio. So I fucking quit. And that was the last day I ever did anything with the music industry. Oh, Whoa. okay. It was because of Justin Bieber walked in and I wasn't allowed to talk to him. And then I bumped into him with Johnny and all that shit. And he's yeah. dapped me up since. But like I've talked to him. Yeah, I've never brought up this. Uh, but that's a much better way to meet somebody. I just want to like tell him that story. Yeah, you like don't want to come out with like, hey, remember 10 years ago? Like, you know, I know you're Justin Bieber who's had tons of sex and had crazy life stories and stuff like that. But I opened for you one day. Dude, this is, you're bringing back so many memories. He was on a show. His first talk show was a Christian talk show. It was like, a, I think his mom brought him on. I don't, rem I don't, I can only remember why I remember this because this is the reason. His mom asked for people to pray for him. She goes, you know, my son's new to this industry and I don't want him to lose Jesus. Like, could you guys pray for him? So I had my whole family pray for Justin Bieber when he was like 15, 16, that he wouldn't lose his way. 
So then now when I'm seeing him do all this Christian music and like all he's devoting to is Jesus, I was like, wow. I was like, his mom really sealed that deal by having the world pray that he wouldn't lose his connection with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this, Justin Bieber, uh, I prayed for you and my whole family did. And we wow, George. It's really nice. <laughs> If you're, you know, you're referring to music, why don't you freestyle for us? Put on the beat and you can freestyle. Oh, okay. oh yeah, I'll freestyle. Yeah, let's this, go. Steven, that's what, you know, you're really putting the guest on the spot there, you know? I was a jerk. No, I, can, I can freestyle, bro. Let's throw it down. No, I was just kidding. You don't have to do anything. We'll see if the boys got something. All right, give me something to talk about so they know, like, nothing's written. I, I, like, I'm going to be that good. But, uh, uh, Justin Bieber, not talking to you. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, Yo, can, we put, can we put up the music? Or you can put in a rap. Okay, I'll tell the story again. Rap it up, rap Justin Bieber. Yeah. Could you put me up? Uh. Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more. Uh. Uh. This is a very island boy. Shit, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> uh. Aight. I'm thugging, Yo, thugging, thugging. I watched his flick, and then I took a pick, and took a thing, and took a drink, and all of a sudden, start to dip. I started crying really quick. My dad started, why you trip? I'm looking at this shit legit, and I'm like, hold on, let me get this thing. I know that I ain't really that big. I know I'm from Arizona, but nobody knows me that quick. I'm trying to go and be that legit. Hop off of my dick, everybody hating real quick. I did a thing and then I won Then I saw him in the parking lot And then I tried to have a little fun But then I was thinking this shit is super dumb He's about to perform and I don't think that he'd be having that much fun out here So I'm out mm -hmm. My mom started talking I started trying to whip it out okay. Not my dick, the conversation, <laughs> don't talk it out loud uh -huh. Hold on, let me get a couple things, let me think it out And now I'm in LA and I swear to God, you know I could walk it out Ooh. Damn! Yeah. See, they uh, more time dude. for the shit like this on Impulsive, man. Whoa. Yeah, man. <laughs> that was a terrible freestyle, but yeah. Damn, George. So you're an entertainer. Why is this a thing? <laughs> dude, why do we use this for the rest of the podcast? Because this is amazing. I love yeah, this. let's have a serious conversation right now. This conversation that came about uh, with you and Steven the other day, how did that happen? Do you just mentor people? Like, uh, struggle in social media. I mean, not struggling. Steven's doing well, but yeah. like mentally is, it causes people to struggle at times. Um, you know, I, I really live by this dude. I, I, I don't really worry about my future. I like, I put it in God's hands and I just know that if somebody comes to me, it might be a reason that he wants me to mentor or take care of. Uh, and I just kind of be as good of a servant as I can. And then God kind of takes care of the rest for me. Like I don't sit there and just pull my hair out and like worry about this or that. I'm just, I, I see the world in such a, like a gratitude type of way. Like once a week, I have everybody just talk about what they're grateful for and what they're excited about. And because I just feel like now- You do this with mindset. your team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being grateful is a, is a very- We're gonna start doing this. We're implementing this system. Yeah, talk about, and also talk about things you wanna work on. And then if, you're, if your crew is talking ill about somebody, even if you don't like that person, nip that in the butt. No, we need that. We, that's, I, I love that. That's some of my favorite things to do is-, is Talk shit? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But no, I, I, I like the I first part. That, yeah. I like the first part. If people have to deserve it, you know? There's a lot of bad people in the world that we need to talk, you know? Well, th there's a lot to- there. Everybody could eat. And I think this is where the confusion is. I think like uh, if I help Steve, right? He- now is eating, but now, okay, hold on. Does that take anything off my plate? No, it doesn't. And if for any way, shape or form, you feel that if you do good for somebody else, it's going to take away from you, you're seriously wrestling with some ego or pride and you need to adjust or you're just not confident in who you are. Yeah. Like you need to work on that. And, and if you really can't love people around you, it's probably because you can't love yourself. And so Ooh, you, need to, you yeah. need to work on it. Wow. Yeah. Maybe I'm extremely insecure and I don't love myself. And that's why I project this, um, <laughs> arrogant persona to everybody you know what i'm oh. learning about myself i want to start implementing that talk about what you're grateful for right now you go first steven i'm grateful for you jeff get out of here steven <laughs> really oh, that's so cute that is very nice he did so say serious. that when we took the walk that was actually what he said did you really yeah. yes jeff you've given me so many like i've just had so much like opportunities with like like through you and like you've like given me a lot of life advice and um, wow, I well, I appreciate that, Stephen. It's it's, know, a, it's a point of view. You made your experience, yeah, and, and just like because that's like the best thing in life, right? Like that's something you can't buy is yeah. an experience and and just like having good times. Yeah, stuff. like when we go on those trips, some of the best times of my life. But your audience is your audience for you. You know, I could just lead you in the right direction. You make your own videos that go viral, and people love you for you. It's true. This kid is blowing. He's blowing up. Wow, you really aren't a drug dealer anymore, huh? No, I've changed. I've wow. gone full LA Jeff now. I'm, I'm 
I'm a hippie, pretty I much. Knew you, I knew you were when you started hitting running like every single day. I was like, oh, there goes Jeff. <laughs> no, <laughs> I do that because I'm mentally ill. I run for my mental health. <laughs> I'm not running for my body. <laughs> I'm running to sweat out the drugs I did the night before. All this is a fraud. Everything I do here is a big scam. Spit take. That's our first one on the yeah, show. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. I'm mentally ill. Wow. Yeah, by I'm drugs, so I, sorry, mean, I mean the drugs that I once was on, but I'm no longer on because I don't need them because I have control of my mind. Now I've taken it back from the substances that were once in me: the devil, Ambien, weed, um, crack, cocaine. I liked Ambien, Jeff. You did, what? guys. This is like the <laughs> worst thing you can. You want to get back on drugs? I'm not saying no, but nah. I'm just kidding. I get it, Jeff. I get it now, bro. I get it. Hey, oh, I'm I'm get it. I don't want to have a bunch of yes men around me. If I'm doing something wrong, you guys got to check me. Tell me I need to get back on drugs. No, you don't I'll need to get back drag on No, I think you've been doing better than ever recently. All right, today's episode is sponsored by Sunday Lawn. It's hard to imagine, but spring is almost here. We are so close to feeling that soft grass under our feet. But first, we need to get our lawn back. Thankfully, Sunday gets your lawn grown and helps to keep it healthy all season long. Sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork, or Sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork or the nasty chemicals. Their custom plans include fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn. Ingredients like seaweed, iron, and molasses. You can feel good with the kids and pets being around, you know, running around barefoot on the grass. All you have to do is visit GetSunday.com put in your address and their lawn analysis tool does the rest. Then you use soil and climate data to create a personal nutrient plan delivered to your door when you need it. Just attach the ready to use pouch to a garden hose and spray. It takes less than 15 minutes. Best of all, this stuff really works. And Sunday is offering our listeners 20% off. Full season plans start at just $129 and you can get 20% off at checkout when you visit GetSunday.com slash JeffFM. That's 20% off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash JeffFM. You have so much confidence. I'm, uh, How do you- I'm, uh, cause I really, I just love who I am, dude. I have nothing to go to sleep ashamed about. So like, I, I could love you, I could love him. And uh, I think it just kind of like write down what you want to work on about yourself. What write down all the shit that you want to develop and just start working at. There's no fucking time in the world for me to sit around and be like, I hit myself because of this. Like no one gives a fuck and no one cares about you. Here's the one thing that I think in my head. When we're talking, I'm thinking about what I want to say next. He's thinking about what he wants to say next. He has dreams. He has ambitions. So do I. She has a dog. And there's two dudes in the bathroom right now. <laughs> there's a lot of things going on. And you're probably thinking that every move you make, people are monitoring and oh, judging yeah. you about. Nobody oh, gives yeah. a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck. And once you really, really <laughs> understand that no one gives a flying fuck. Nobody gives a fuck. Cool, cool good. bro. Nobody gives a fuck. My man. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We're kind of both the same, huh? Me and George. Mm. Uh, big dig energy, bro. Yeah. We're just like good mentors to you guys. Yeah, no, yeah. We've been through it. Do you have insecurities? That's what I meant to say. Sorry, not. Uh, yes. Um, I feel like sometimes I let my pride get in the mix. The personal things I have to deal with. Uh, sometimes I get uh, insecure when about myself though. Like I go like, oh shit, I'm running out of time. I got to do this. I got to do that. But the people around me, I never really was in competition of people around me. Just because like I, I'm not in a competition. I'm I'm trying to do what I want to do, and how fast I go is in my mind. So I'm, I'm, I'm in competition with myself. And I guess the insecurity that I have now is the younger me was faster and younger. So like, I think that's the only thing I kind of get insecure about, but no, I never. And a lot of people thought I'd be insecure about my height. I, I swear to God, I've never cared about my height. In fact, if I had a genie right now, there's like a thousand wishes that I would make before I even come close to fucking making a wish about my height. I love my height. When I get on airplanes, I have so much room for my legs. Uh, when I go to the movies, I'm very comfortable. Uh, I'm fun size. Me and my girlfriend could wear the same jacket. Uh, I I based it more off my personality. I feel like tall guys are a little bit more uncomfortable to talk to. Uh, <laughs> this is your I'm team. really good at fucking, yeah, that's what I'm saying, that's bro. <laughs> good. Good I'm really good at basketball for my height, so it's great because I watch them give me the weakest person and in the middle of the game give me the strongest person. Like, I guess starting here and then going up, it's I like it. 
And also, I'm, I want to be an actor, and all of the actors that I look up to are short as fuck, bro. Yeah, if anything, matter. I would wish for me to be a little tinier than I would want to go up. So really? Your number one yeah. wish. If it, uh, what do you say? A genie? What, what did you say? If I had a genie to make a wish. What's like, your number one wish? My number Personally. one. Truly? Yeah. I would really, really, really wish that people could be a little bit more grateful and see the world that I see. And then I okay. feel like there would be a lot less like problems. I would ask for a bigger penis. That would be the very first Yeah. Thing. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Let's... Steven, listen, everything happens for a reason. You were given that penis for whatever reason it is. It's original. And you should be proud of that thing. I actually am. Getting I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest good. with you. Like, and I'm not just saying this because I, like, I love flashing my friends. Uh, coming from a very confident guy in that direction, you know how they say it's not about the size, it's how you use it? Mm -hmm. It's a lie. It's, <laughs> it's all about the fucking stick, bro. <laughs> do you mind if we cut to a quick weather segment? It's a part of the show. We have yes, to do it. It's the sponsor's son. Oh. Hey, we're shooting it this year. Hey, we're shooting George, this year. is there any room in this movie for me? Yeah? Okay, great. We'll, we'll be in touch after. Um, hey, uh, how's it going? Wow, weatherman. Thanks for... <laughs> Doing this, I guess. Uh, it's actually Mr. Rottenborn. Okay, look, I don't really want to get into all this. You know, we had we've been on a good run here. Everything's been running smooth. I have a woman in my life now. Well, you had a uh, no, you had a client. You had a. I have a client uh, who I represent in a very public lawsuit that is happening right now, and you had the uh, the opposer on your podcast. On the last episode. That's correct. Sir. So you're a little jealous that we had a famous actor on the show, Johnny no, I'm Depp. Not I'm, I'm not jealous. I just wanted to set the record straight. Hey, pal, why don't you cut to the weather already and stop all this nonsense? This is why we can't have that you on the show. You crack. know, we could don't call in anybody. We had A-list celebrity Johnny Depp call in last week through Zoom Technologies, and we are not going to do this shit with you every time. Give us the weather, or we're cutting the bit. That's I don't care if your dad sponsors the show. I don't give a fuck. My dad doesn't sponsor the show. My name is Ben Rottenborn. Forecast. What is it? Where? What town are you in? What's the temperature outside? I'm in LA. It's warm, and it feels nice. I don't know. It's a perfect day. The weather here is the same. It's the same you weather. You know, you should start appreciating moments like that. You know, you have a nice day here in LA. You fucking Californians, you think it's sunshine and rainbows everywhere in the world. No, you ever go to London? People are miserable. Go to Seattle. People are jump suicide capital. They're fucking just jumping off bridges every five minutes on a timer. Just deaths. You don't know what it's like, pal. Makes you think. Yeah. Maybe you should try some guided meditation. All those negative thoughts and all that jealousy you feel for people that are more successful than you. Maybe just... Block right. those thoughts out. Don't let them affect you because they're they're obviously affecting yeah. you and they're affecting your weather segments here because we're not getting the damn weather. I got to pry it out of you every time. What's the point? I don't think I'm needed anymore. I see he's gone. <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> so can I ask you something? What in the fuck was that? It's our weather man. We do a weather segment here. This show's a little different. It's a little innovative. You know, it's different than other podcasts. I, I really, this is, this is really fun. I'm not even lying to you. I know we've been shooting the shit, but this is a great podcast. You got special effects. You got Steven. You got two guys in the bathroom. Yeah. You know, you got your barber shit going on. I'm really proud of you, bro. You really. Thank you. George. Really did. You did well. I really appreciate you. Uh, I'm grateful to have you as a friend and I've known you for so long. I appreciate and, it. Man. Thank you so much. I, uh, I I'm happy that we're friend. getting, we're getting back closer together again. You yeah. Know? You left me for more clout, but whatever. We'll be back. <laughs> Well, Fuck you know how it is. You know the game. I know the game. You know what I see in you, George? You know what I see? I see a little bit of Joey from Friends, a little bit of Sebastian Maniscalco. I love Sebastian. And I love I, Joey. Yeah. Let's go. And I don't know who else, but I'll figure it out. It's just George. People say I look like uh, Robert Downey Jr. sometimes. Yeah. Dude, I went to a premiere where he came. Like, so all the Avengers came out on stage, and I'm like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. But then, dude, when he came out, are you into those movies? Into those? I've watched every single one of them like 11 times. It's like an amusement park of the film industry. Sure. That's what Scorsese says, so I copy it. Uh, okay, it was very off-put. That was a weird place to put it. Who copied it? <gasps> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, see the technology we got over here? We're changing the game. Mask open. That's what I'm saying, George. Back to what you said before. <laughs> we're not just doing stuff just to do it, you know? Oh, everybody does a podcast now. We're going to do a podcast. Just set up mics. No, we want to change the game. We want to innovate. We want to make people fucking copy ideas from us. Yeah. And we're gr still growing. Look at this. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> I've always wanted to do this. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <clears throat> 
The music's fucking me up, bro. Thank you, George. George. You've been an excellent guest on Jeff FM today. Oh, I appreciate we that. We appreciate your time. Oh, thank you so insight. much. That was so much fun. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you for having me. Uh, and then be nicer to Steven and the dudes in the bathroom. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Please come back anytime. Can, can we end with like a group hug? Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, there is a terrorist amongst us. <laughs> I feel a little, uh, <laughs> we don't have to edit that one out. I no. <laughs> feel like that one had to do about me, man. you guys. I think, uh, what are you? What, what, uh, I'm not a terrorist. <laughs> you can just put that out there. What are I'm you? Not Greek, a Middle Eastern? Are you Middle Eastern? Uh, I am. I'm a Syrian. Are you a mix? I'm a Syrian. Yeah, yeah. Are you full blooded? A Syrian? Yeah. <laughs> that one got you, huh? Steven, <laughs> if you're laughing at it, then you think it's funny. No, I didn't laugh. It's, it's I said his, we need was, to cut his, it. His, it's it inappropriate. Was, no, I get it. You're racist. <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was, it was Dude, you're, you're way, way you, too white to be making <laughs> jokes like that. <laughs> you look like burning magnesium. I can't even make eye contact with you. You literally look blazing like the sun. I have to wear sunglasses when I look at you. Your credit score must be amazing. <laughs> It is. It is. <laughs> George, what's what's next for us all? Uh, what are we gonna do? Like, what do you mean on this podcast right now? Our careers. Oh, uh, what lane you see us going in? You're obviously gonna get back into selling drugs. Uh, <laughs> you are gonna get uncomfortably <laughs> awkward even more. The guys in the bathroom are probably gonna, you know, be tired of the shit. Yeah, they they already are. <laughs> Bathroom shit. Yeah, that went over my head. Oh, this is my favorite it. podcast we've ever done. I'm not you love George yeah, so yeah. much, <laughs> and you know I'm I'm, I'm happy that you guys are making little relationships on the side. I like Mike a lot. I've taken a liking to Mike. I didn't think I was gonna like him at first because he reminded me so much of like my friends I grew up with and me myself. He probably reminded you a lot of your childhood clients? because yeah, they're clients. I was about to say, <laughs> dude, you beat me to it. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, he did. Have you ever seen pictures I, of Mike from back in the day when he was big, Mike? He looked oh, like Elon Musk. Adam Sandler. <laughs> no, he, he does not. No, look like he Adam he Sandler. looks like Adam Sandler now, but he used to look like Elon Musk before oh, he had really? money. Like Elon Musk. Like Elon before he made PayPal. Elon. Musk. What did you say? <laughs> before he paid his pals back. That was that was what <laughs> yeah, he looked yeah, like. Yeah, what his money. That's yeah, it. That's Elon the Musk. picture. Bro, look at that. Elon Muskie. Bro, he looks like he was. Kicked out of the Jersey Shore auditions, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like, if Elon how Musk long grew is up that thing? I had an opioid addiction. He looked you know, like he good. spit in your food at Taco Bell because you were like you pissed him off or something. You got anything else you want to share with our audience over here at Jeff FM Studios? Uh, I, I like to I like to leave off a few things I want people to remember me by. Okay. I'm just kidding. No, uh, a lot of people like throw out their Instagram and shit. I don't give a fuck about that. What I want you guys to do is start being a little bit more grateful, and if you guys want to work on that. And if there's anybody that wants to work on that uh, and you want to take your anxiety or depression and make it happy and bubbly like and weird like mine, uh, there is a way to get that brain to operate. So you have to flex that muscle. So the next time you're around and you say something mean about somebody in your head, say two things nice about them. And then all of a sudden your brain will start adapting to not saying bad things because you're going to start equaling them out. And then you're going to be tired of fucking, oh, okay, now I got to say two things nice about them. And you could work that muscle. Can you give us an example? Do me. Okay. Uh, you walk in there, I'm like, God, fucking, I hate that <laughs> Crane's hat on this fucking, <laughs> this guy's head. And then I'll pause and be like, you know what? But he's very healthy. He goes out. I should be more like that. And uh, I love his confidence. Oscar, Fuck. play us off. Play us off with a song. Like the Oscars when his speech is going too long. George is going for too long. <sighs> Thank you, George. George. You have a good host. And a we'll good smack, you smack the shit out of <laughs> Thank you, George Jayco. I was angry with YouTube at the time, and they were age restricting all my videos. I was putting in a lot of hard work, and I think I didn't think what I was doing deserved how they were treating me. So I sent them a message. If you want to fuck with me, I'll fucking leave. I'll do this. Destruction. Next, I'll cut the head off this fucking thing. I'll behead my streaming. You got a stream? Yeah. yeah. I'll cut the fucking head off. I have no attachment to that. That changed my life. Nothing. Really? That's so impressive, I thought I would be bro. fulfilled. You, you, you I feel no different there? at all. I just watched the part where they you flung him. I mean, if, if you want. I Awards mean, me really nothing. Challenge. All that matters <sighs> is that what, George? I'd is like that to you're thank content my mom. up here? You're yeah, happy, you're grateful. Cutting. I'd like to thank my right, father for coming to this country. <laughs> all right, we're, we're out. They cut us. <laughs> okay, great. All right, that's it. <laughs> that was a good time. Thank you, George. You killed it. Yeah, you're a good podcast. All right, see what they see in you over there. You know?